All right, in this first video, I'm gonna show you, uh, here's how the antenna was mounted. It was uh, zip tied here to the bottom with the ends clearly sticking out the sides and uh, you know, off of the carbon, but still kind of in line with it. You can see here I never get more than like 50 yards away from myself and yet I've got nothing but alerts going off. I mean this is very frustrating because you never really know if you're at a true radio signal um, failure point. In the second video I switched it up and ran it just like this zip tied to the bottom of a single arm uh, with the ends sticking out the sides uh, much more away from the carbon fiber. Um, you can see the results. <laughs> If you look in the corner, you can see the crossfire link quality. You can see that just by moving the antenna out a little bit away from the carbon frame and onto a single arm, that makes a pretty profound difference in the link quality of the crossfire signal. While there are still the occasional blips of 60s or 70s, it was never long enough for the radio to report an RSSI issue, which is exactly what I was going for. I even had a verbal alert to tell me when the RFMD switches from 2 to 0 or 1, and never once did it leave mode 2. Mode 2 is a setting which requires the highest signal strength to maintain. I think the original antenna orientation is great for making sure your antenna stays in good shape and not damaged because it's very protected under the frame. This makes it perfectly fine for racing, but you probably want to turn off your RSSI warning because they're going to be going off constantly. If you plan to get out pretty far away from yourself, I highly recommend this, the second antenna orientation or mounting it on top of the quad. If you're one of the guys who helped me out by commenting on my last video, I really appreciate that. You guys totally led me to uh, the right answers and uh, fixing this problem. If you like videos like this, please subscribe and thanks for watching.